Um, hi, everyone. My name is Philippe Normand. I work at Igalia. Um, really? Yeah. Mike? Let me know when I can start. <laughs> Now? You hear me? Okay, all right. Yeah, so yeah. Hi, my name is Philippe Normand. I am working at Tigalia on WebKit and Gstreamer for quite a while now. I've been working on WebRTC lately. Um, so, brief outline of the talk. After giving a brief introduction on the topic, I will provide a summary of the timeline of what happened on, on WebRTC integration in WebKit. Then, provide some information about the current status of the implementation we have, and the upcoming challenges, and ongoing challenges. <laughs> yeah, so WebKit, as you probably know, is a free and software uh, web engine. Um, it was mainly developed by uh, Apple initially, and then we, more companies joined, and more maintainers, such as Igalia and Sony, so they have their own uh, ports, so they have their own platform implementation of it. And the high-level API is called the WebView that can be used for, to build a native application embedding uh, web content. So you can, for instance, build set-of-box UIs, um, whatever you want on, on desktop applications, and also um, a nice application called Telegram that can like, containerize web applications in a single desktop uh, uh, application. So we have WebKit is like split in several ports. Um, Apple has its own products, so they, that they ship as a Safari, for instance, on iOS, macOS. Uh, the Sony folks uh, provide a port as well that is used on the PlayStation. Um, and then on, on Linux desktop, we have uh, WebKit GTK. Um, there used to be a, a cute port, but it was removed uh, because it was not maintained anymore. Um, and then on embedded platforms, we have the WP port. That is kind of sharing the uh, GLib API with the desktop. So we have, uh, on the Linux, we have some common layer called JLib, and then uh, specific bits for embedded parts. So WebRTC, you probably know, it's like re real-time communication for the web. So the, most of use, web, uh, use cases for video conferencing. Um, but there are more use cases, actually. Uh, nowadays, people use WebRTC to do cloud gaming, um, even like online auctions, sports betting, like any kind of uh, low latency application can be can benefit from from WebRTC, and it's also used for broadcasting, low latency broadcasting, and then nowadays in Gstreamer itself, it's quite used as you, as you as you can probably know from the schedule of the <laughs> conference with WebRTC Sync and WebRTC Source. You can build native application uh, outside of the web engine uh, and leveraging WebRTC stack. Um, so WebRTC. It's a long story. Uh, it started actually once upon a time in 2010. I was contacted by um, an Ericsson engineer. Perhaps you don't see the mail there, but uh, he's, he's called, his name is Adam Berg Bergvist. I met him at a contributors meeting in uh, San Francisco in 2010. And then he reached out to, to me to, like, to, he, he was experimenting in WebKit GTK at the time to provide some kind of video conferencing uh, solution for WebKit. Uh, Google already had its own stack by then for Hangouts. And there was some efforts to try to standardize that in, into the W3C spec. So it was one of them. So I think at that time, they also used Fastream to build their own experiments. And then uh, Ericsson, with uh, the help of other companies, built a framework called OpenWebRTC that was then uh, integrated kind of in WebKit as a, as a proof of concept. Um, Open Web OpenWebRTC was at the time a research project was not really deployed in production. And I think it was a good experiment to, to try to see where, where, where we should go with that. But unfortunately, the, its, it's API was kind of strange. Um, uh, it was a bit difficult to integrate, integrate into WebKit, and it was not really customer friendly. Um, and also, it didn't have hardware acceleration support for some platforms such as uh, Android and, and iOS. So yeah, it was um, it was a bit strange, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's, we still had a, a backend for that in WebKit for a couple of years. Um, but then the Apple people and the Apple engineers uh, brought LibreRTC in WebKit. They, they did the bundle thing 
in, in the WebKit tree, and they wanted to use that for their ports. So at some point, we, have, we had the open WebRTC backend and the lib WebRTC backend at the same time. So we maintained both backends at, at, for a while, but we decided we had to, to give up on web, open WebRTC because it was not uh, really a, a long-term solution for us. So we, we switched to LibWebRTC and we, we tried to integrate that with the uh, GStreamer encoders, especially. Um, but hardware acceleration was a, a big challenge for, for that um, because you, you kind of require a custom like, decoder sync combination with LibWebRTC and it's not really flexible. So we, we had a lot of issues with that. And another issue was um, at the time, Boring SSL was used by LibWebRTC, so under dual licensing. And it was, a, it was posing some restrictions for applications using Web WebKit and, and LibWebRTC. And also the huge complexity of LibWebRTC is kind of a media framework of its own. And is it bundling that into tables, into source tables, was an issue. This was like a couple megabytes more. <laughs> millions of lines of code, and we couldn't afford to, to bundle that into, uh, into a kit uh, tables. So we, we have the, the backend. It's like possible to build WP and WebKit GTK with that, uh, but it's not shipped in, in releases. Um, and then what happened is that in 2017, uh, GST WebRTC was released, announced at the GStreamer conference. Um, I started experimenting with that quite early on. I was using a, a branch from Matthew, I think, from the merge request. Um, I had a basic backend already around November, and um, then a couple of years later, um, after a short pause on that work, we finally have streamed the backend in early 2020. Um, so yeah, what about Sim Web Kits? What's, the, what's working? What's not working? <laughs> So first, if you want to do a video call, you need to capture streams. Uh, you need, if you want to send any kind of data, you need to stream, uh, capture the stream. And that's done with a, a spec called Media Capture Streams. <laughs> um, so you can capture your webcam if you want, um, or your desktop applications. Uh, you can also capture a canvas or even um, a video element. And all these APIs provide a uniform um, JavaScript object called Media Stream, and that represents the stream, so it has it's like um, a set of tracks that you can like, see as a live stream of data, of audio and video data. And so in WebKit, we have to handle that. We have uh, different pipelines. You can see there that we have one for um, webcam. So using PipeWire, I really simplified the pipelines, but uh, yeah, to, so that they fit on the slides. <laughs> and then we, we, we have to decode that. Um, we could support also like path-through uh, encoded streams, but right now we, we do decoding. Um, that's an, uh, um, an experiment for later on. Uh, we also do like microphone capture, of course. And then at the bottom, you can see another instance of PipeWire source that is uh, streaming uh, video um, DMA buffs to an app sync. And uh, all these app syncs are actually um, notifying internal observers in WebKit of like every time you receive a frame, you notify observers. It's a kind of a design pattern. And for providing especially the webcam on, on embedded platforms, we, we use the usual GST device provider API. And, and then on desktop, as nowadays, applications are like sandboxed with, with uh, flat packs. We have to like be careful about that and not um, we, we can't really use the GST device providers. We have to go through the uh, uh, camera portal. I started working on that, and um, hopefully it should be merged soon. Um, and yeah. So then, all these media streams, if you want to play them, we have a source element in WebKit called WebKit Media Stream Source. <laughs> and it's like acting as an observer to the uh, app things I mentioned before. And then like, it's then providing uh, the data using app source to, to playback pipelines. And um, it's also used for like, playback of incoming streams, as you, as you saw later. And um, yeah, we have one app source per media stream track. 
the streaming is done with an, a spec called peer connection. Um, you can see there a really simple pipeline. Or, again, I had to simplify a lot of things. Um, but there are basically three parts. On the left, you can see the outgoing source. So this is an example of a pipeline sending one stream and receiving one. So we do the payloading there, and then we provide that payloaded stream to WebRTC bin, which we use to, um, to interface with, with WebKit. And then for the incoming stream, we receive payloaded, RTP payloaded stream. We, dip, we pass that with PassBin, and then we pass that to, uh, to the app sync, which is observed by a playback uh, media stream source. Um, the peer connection API is like implemented by WebRTC bin. So GST WebRTC is, is consists of two things. Uh, runtime GStreamer element called WebRTC bin, and then we have a library called libgst WebRTC that provides API for all, all the WebRTC things, such as the, uh, uh, the RTP standard receiver, all, all these uh, parts of the spec. And it's, the integration was quite seamless, I, I should say, because of course WebRTC bin is following the GSEP specification, and so that all the offerings are uh, set up um, is implemented already at the IDL uh, level in WebKit. So we had only had to like, do a one-to-one -one mapping with, with the WebRTC bin API in the signals. And also, GST Promise-based API is also quite useful because in WebKit we have also to handle with promises. So uh, we, we basically, it's, it's really nice to, to use that, uh, that uh, API from WebRTC bin and GST WebRTC. Regarding encoding, we have our own um, encoder. It's kind of a wrapper um, that we've built. Um, you provided the output caps, and then it is going to select the right encoder, be, um, depending on what's available on the platform. So we have a list of encoders registered in that wrapper. And then based on the rank, uh, the right encoder should be selected. And then we provide kind of a uniform API for bitrate setting, because some encoders work in kilobits per second, and others not. And it, it's a bit of a mess right now in, in GStreamer. So we, we do some conversion there and provide a unified API in, in kilobits per second. And you can also adapt the bitrate. Um, in the, in the back end, we set up the uh, Google uh, congestion control element from uh, GC plugin uh, Rust. And that, that element gives us a bitrate estimation. And, and we pass that to the video encoder using, a, I think it's a, it's a query, or we set the property. So that's the custom things that we do. And also, that encoder is not used only for WebRTC, but also for web codecs and for recording. So we have um, presets there regarding latency and, and bitrate mode that allows us to configure the encoder. Um, depending on what's the end use case. Um, and then, yeah, if you receive a stream, you, you want to play it back. In JavaScript, you will set up the media stream source to a video element. But internally, then, um, WebKit will implement, will, uh, will use Playbin 3 to load that URI. And then internally, you will find out what the media stream is about, so what is its, uh, its uh, layout how many tracks it contains, and it will like, internally configure the media stream source element, uh, depending on that. And then the, the playback will start. It's, uh, it's the media, media stream source is like emitting a stream collection, and it's all Playbin 3 friendly. It's, it's not working in Playbin 2 at all. So it's, it's really the most modern API we have. Um, so in WebRTC, there are more things. <laughs> Uh, the stats API, um, so yeah, we, we have to in, in integrate with that as well. Uh, in, initially, the stats API in GST WebRTC was, uh, was a bit minimal, I would say. Um, not, um, so we had, we had to, f to fill some gaps there. Um, so we, we sent so much requests about that in trying to improve the, the coverage. Um, but still, not all the stats can be filled by WebRTC bin because, for instance, it, it, it's not like taking care of encoding or decoding. So 
we have to fill those uh, ourselves from WorkKit. So we, we set up some internal infrastructure for that using custom queries to like fill the frame decoded, frame encoded, bitrate, uh, all, all these things for the incoming and outgoing source uh, stats. And then another API is called the data channel. So if you want to send data over the wire or receive data, um, for that we, we didn't uh, really have many issues. Um, the integration went quite uh, qu quite well. Um, it's again one-to-one -one mapping with uh, the spec, kind of. So we didn't have a lo a lots of issues with, with that. Um, so the implementation implementation focus right now is that. So we focused a lot on media stream uh, because that's the most basic requirement for WebRTC. And so we, we focused on compliance tests, trying to increase the coverage. And also now we're getting more into the pure WebRTC test uh, compliance. We're using the web platform test and the, the test we have in WebKit. And a more, we also focused on cloud gaming. Uh, we brought up some uh, demo that is able to play games using the uh, Amazon Luna platform. Um, I have a de uh, demo on my laptop. You can ask me afterwards. I can show you. Um, so you can play Amazon Luna games from WebKit GTK and WP. Uh, we have gamepad support as well, so it can be used for cloud gaming. Uh, and then more platforms could be could be brought up um, depending on on what the needs are. And regarding video conferencing, we, we're trying to get GC working. Uh, it's a bit complicated, uh, but we'll get there eventually. <laughs> uh. So yeah, what's what's the challenges? Um, regarding video encoding, we have we we could use some improvement in our encoder story. Um, there's a spec called WebRTC SVC, so for uh, simulcast uh, encoding. Um, not all encoders, I think, support uh, those capabilities, such as temporal and spatial uh, scalability. I think it's supported in VP8 and VP9 and AV1. Um, so we will need to, like, to see how to integrate that in, into our encoder. Um, it's, not, it's not been started yet. It's on, on our to-do list. But some platforms kind of require that, and uh, it's, it's going to be important for, for the future. Network sandboxing, as you probably know, WebRTC, uh, WebKit is like multi-processed. So we have a uh, web process that is going to do the, like the DOM and JavaScript handling, and then another process called network process, which is responsible of like doing the network operations. And right now, all this WebRTC stuff pipelines we have are running from the web process, which is not really good for security, because then you 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 basically have a vulnerable web process. So the idea is to move the network handling into the network process. And for that, um, LibJSC WebRTC recently gained capability to have like custom ICE uh, implementations. So hopefully, we will try to use that, leverage that new capability to, uh, to sandbox the network usage to the network process. Yeah. And yeah, another option could be to customize sleep nice. We tried to have a look at that as well. It, it might still also be an option. We're not sure yet what, what approach to use. Um, so yeah, there are more features needed for WebRTC, such as like ice candidate filtering and encryption. Um, the status coverage could also be increased. Uh, there are so many things to, to, to fill there. Uh, also, what about CV? I don't think it supports uh, direction changes yet. So perhaps that should be that could be something to work on at, at some point in the, in the future. And then there's a, a, another part of the spec called DTMF, which allows to like send and receive pulse, um, uh, like telephone pulse events. Like uh, I, I don't, I don't think it's really low priority. I don't think uh, anyone is using that. Um, so uh, right now it's really low back like at the bottom of the to-do list, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, DTMF is supported in GStreamer. Right? There's, it's like, it should be possible, it should be possible, but we just need someone to, to work on that. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So yeah, that's, that's, that's it for the talk. I really be happy to answer any, any questions. <coughs> Uh, do you have any feedback of the experience of using PipeWire for video capture so far? I'd be curious. I'll be attending a workshop. Uh, yeah. So, at the end I, of this I week, so was the microphone on? Or? Huh? Okay. Did so everyone hear? The question was okay. about. Okay. So yeah, PipeWire. Yeah, it, it's it, integration is a bit. Um, it's not. I mean, it's it's working, but it could be better. I think. Yeah. Uh, for instance, on desktop, like for. In, Interfacing with the camera portal, you need the PipeWire session, and then then we, we should use PipeWire source. It it's like a bit of um, duplication of work, like uh, between the negotiation with the portal and then setting up the streaming with another session. Perhaps there could be room for improvement in that, but yeah, otherwise yeah, it, it's it's working f kind of for our use case, but yeah, the still. Issues like I think recaps re renegotiation is not working well. Um, yeah, yes, things to I do. I think some of the issues you're mentioning are also issues we would have if we use Pipeware with Dreamer itself. So, do you think we could um, improve Dreamer with probably wrapper elements to make that smoother, or mm. and would it be reusable by something like more complex like WebKit? <laughs> That's often the question. You mean a, a a wrapper for PipeWire, like a, a different implementation? Well, as an example for screencasts, where you have to speak portal, you have to speak PipeWire, yeah. maybe we could wrap that in something yeah. low level enough, but that actually combines both into one. Yeah, perhaps we, we could do something about that, yeah. And another aspect is the constraints. So when you, in JavaScript, when you do get user media, you can specify a set of constraints like a, the size of the, the window you want and uh, the frame rate. Perhaps we, we could uh, implement a wrapper like providing some capability to, to do that. Uh, yeah. I see. Thanks. Thanks. Any other questions? Anybody, anybody wants to sing or anything? <laughs> I can.